The public and the local media have had a chance to grill the Port Pirie Council candidates on the big issues before the upcoming state election. It's been part of an open election forum hosted by Matt and Dave of the ABC's Breakfast Program. The public was keeping a close watch on candidates as they attempted to answer the questions put to them this morning, each given a chance to spruik why people should vote for them. Look, uh, Jeff is, is there doing things for people. I just think we can do a lot better and I think we can get a lot more things done. <laughs> what, I, what I don't want to see in the future is our, our, our super school debacle, for, for want of a better word, that arose last year. The current member for Frome heavily questioned about his level of independence and which party he'd prefer to support remained tight-lipped. I am here to support both parties. I've worked with the government and I've worked with the opposition and I've worked with the upper house. My philosophy is I'm a true independent, I'm not aligned to either party and I will never be aligned to either party. But when pressed on the issue was compared to Peter Lewis, the controversial former member for Hammond who negotiated with both parties before throwing his support behind Labor. I would uh, support the latter at this stage. You Peter Lewis. At this stage, I, at, at the end of the case, but I would need to have a final decision when it comes to that time. The public had their own take on today's open debate. I think it's very important to hear what they have to say and also how they intend to react or particularly listening to Jeff Brock if uh, he wins, as to how he would react if it suddenly came down to him to decide who had to form government. I think that was very important as well. We must get out there and see the people and find out what the real people want and how they're feeling. Justine Norvey, Southern Cross News. Meanwhile, the Greens candidate for the seat of Giles travelled from Wyala to be at the event. He's worried about the Rand government's plans to build a port at Point Lowly and is basing his election campaign on saving it. The Wyala and Roxby Downs veterinarian Andrew Melville-Smith says the location of the proposed port is inappropriate, putting many things at stake. The fishing, the aquaculture, the tourism, the recreation of the Upper Spencer Gulf at risk and it's so unnecessary because there are other alternatives. One of those alternatives, according to retired engineer Sid Wilson, is a plant on the Eyre Peninsula. The alternatives give us the option to have the port south of Wyala, the same number of jobs, less environmental impact, uh, less social impact and it also leaves the, the benefits that the Lowly Peninsula brings in money and environment and social uh, intact as well. So you can have the best of both. Mr Wilson, a member of the Alternative Ports Committee, believes the government is taking the easier and cheaper option by planning to build at Point Lowly rather than on the Air Peninsula. We believe the government should do an investigation and look at having a very competitive one-off port on the Air Peninsula rather than be a bit player and have um, a port wherever it's most convenient. Member of the Save the Point Lowly group Tom Cheeseman says the Spencer Gulf is one of the worst possible places to build a desal plant because all of the micronutrients that feed the food chain can't be replaced if they're removed through desalination. It's, it's a gulf for a reason, you know, it's an inverse estuary, it's called that for a reason um, and that's because it doesn't have the tidal flow. Justine Northey, Southern Cross News.